a lifetime of hard work, children laughing in the kitchen, family photos on a restaurant wall, a legacy that lives on. It all comes from the power of a conversation, like the one Tommy Hall had with First Horizon Bank about taking over his father's Charleston-based restaurant business. Now the table is set for a whole new generation. First Horizon Bank, let's find a way. Go to firsthorizon.com slash Tommy. First Horizon Bank, member FDIC. Well, it's a new year, new time for resolutions. And today in the Marketing Mad Men, we're going to talk about all the New Year's resolutions we should be making, or you did make, or you already broke as a marketer. We'll also talk about upcoming trends, things to look out for, and Trip and I will make bold predictions. All that and more today on the Marketing Mad Men. They say marketing is a madman's game. So now we turn it over to the Marketing Mad Men with Nick Constantino and Trip Job. Happy Saturday. Welcome to the Marketing Mad Men. Trip Job here with Nick Constantino of uh, 680 The Fan and Atlanta Braves Radio Network. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. It's uh, It's been a couple weeks. So, it has. Uh, it's good to get back and uh, it's good to uh, have refreshed, recharged. and. For sure. uh you know, I don't know about you, and I'm I'm, I'm sure a uh, chance to kind of look back uh, a little bit on last year and yeah. take a, a quick dive of okay, what what happened, what was uh, key, and uh, you know, how do you use that uh, moving into 2023? Yeah, I think uh, you know it was a it was a weird break, right? Christmas and New Year's were on the Sunday, so you also had the Monday off. So I feel like I was gone for like you know it was like it really it was like 10, 11 days. Um, so I tried my best to shut the brain off completely work wise and really just chase my freaking kids around all over the place, which is exhausting in itself. Uh, but then you come back, it's already January 2nd. You're like, Oh my goodness, we have work to do. Like we have stuff we have to do. So I think this is a great time to have the conversation. Um, just look quickly, briefly backwards, and then we'll, we'll spend most of the time looking forward, uh, talk about some new year's resolutions and then talk about some trends and, and different things that are on the horizon for this, uh, calendar year. No, absolutely. And I think, you know, for my years uh, on the corporate side, this first week is always a great week to, um, you know, you, you're you're finalizing all your plans, you know, you're and then a lot of times it's communicating. But um, to your point, it's OK, let's make sure we take one last look at uh, what uh, the previous depends what, kind of what company, depends what kind of company you are the, the, yeah, the, the some, smart ones are doing that one last look some are like uh oh I forgot right, and they're yeah, like hey, now it's time to do it on. I mean we every year we put our budgets in in October to be done here uh, we still don't have budgets for the year yeah, which well. is always a scam against sales because it's always all of a sudden it's January and it's like oh wait how much did you do your budget's up yeah so. well my, uh, my second and uh, hopefully final review is uh, due uh, you know right here at the end of this week so <laughs> I know the feeling but um, no I mean I think if I look back at uh, 2022, um, you know, one of the things that uh, I will take away is I think there was, um, you know, this idea of people started uh, ramping up again. And it's how do you ramp up? Yeah. And, you know, You're okay, talking so post COVID and just get, post COVID, people get excited. How do we yeah. do this? And I think that's, you know, one of the things. And I think sometimes when you don't have a plan, you know, you just sometimes you take the first thing that comes along your way. Yeah. And I saw a lot of it, heard a lot of it this year. And I think it's, you know, whether or not you believe you're going to be spending or whether you believe you might have to be a little more austere in the year. I think, you know, you, you always need to have some type of contingency plan or things that you want to do if the situation allows. I just heard so many people that, you know, they're like, okay, business is coming back. I've got the money to invest. You know, I see other people doing things and they just, you know, whether it was, it could be Twitter, it could be TikTok, it could be digital media, you you name it. I think I just heard too many stories of people that were, you know, they just felt like they had to do something. Yeah, but they didn't know what. And I, I, I like that you use the, the austerity, but I also think it's a terrifying word. Uh, you know, you think about Greece and Portugal when they were going through it and, and it just the fear that it strikes. But I think it's a good word, right? Because yeah. I think that you should be cost efficient most times. But when it's really about to hit the fan, which we all know it is, yeah. I think austere is the right word. And I think that you can cut out. I think that those two things conflicted, though, right? I think people were trying to get back to it. But at the same time, it's cheaper. It's so much more expensive now to borrow money. And all these corporations that were about grow, grow, grow are now like we have to realize a profit so the fragmentation that happened in marketing if you look at you know for the first time ever Amazon, I mean, so Facebook and Google represent less than 50% of the advertising market as of this year for the first time ever. Because yep. every other person, Amazon, Hulu, they're all like, screw these guys. We're going to make yeah. our own ad platform, which means all of a sudden now at the same time, 
all these things are going to be switched on, which is going to fragment the market more. All of a sudden, all these companies are going to be worried about actually turning a profit, which means the pricing is going to get all out of control. Everyone's going to try to justify bottom line. So I think it is, a, it is setting itself up for a very odd advertising year moving forward. Um, so that's what stands out to me. I just the, the, the further fragmentation, which again, usually is followed by consolidation and where these people all merge yeah. back together. You see that also, right? You know, Time Warner is going to merge Discovery with with HBO Max. All these people are like, wait, we, we have too much going on everywhere. Well, I think that's part of it. So, again, I think a lot of those companies, those platforms, um, again, they saw a trend and they felt they had to do something. So they launched all those platforms and now they're kind of realizing, hey, we were uh, we, we got out, out over our skis a little bit. This For doesn't sure. make sense anymore. And it's easier when money is free and then yeah. you're, you're borrowing at a 0.9 percent interest rate where pretty much you just put your stock out there yeah. and you're getting more and more money to put in to invest. But now it's going to be much, 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 much harder. To yeah. do that. I mean, in the first one I saw and, in, in, you know, kind of in the space we're talking about was uh, when what was it? Fourth quarter, I think, was uh, when NBC shut down the NBC sports platform. Yeah. Right. And yep. they basically pulled everything into USA wherever they could. Yep. And, um, you know, I was like, wow, you know, that's yep. that was a major to me. That was a major change in programming and how, you know, some of these entities were going to look at things. And then obviously the advertising was another piece. Yeah. And, and, and and frankly, that was probably part of it. They were probably struggling with getting sure. the revenue from the ad platform. Whereas yeah. guess what? USA has a, a larger, um, you know, uh, circulation, different types of demographics, et cetera, that they can sell, you know, all the various sides, sports yeah. as well as lifetime movies, et cetera. I think sports is an interesting one. I think sports, one of the things you saw, NBC Sports is a great example. Sports are more popular than ever, but you're really starting to see a separation of the pack, right? You know, you have MLB, like they shut down half of the minor league teams. Like yeah. it's not going to affect Major League Baseball at all. You know, maybe a dozen years from now when all of a sudden the form, the system isn't as good. Um, but the NFL, everyone's like, oh, Kaepernick took a knee. This is over. No one's yeah. watching the NFL. Uh, if you've seen the ratings, that is absolutely not happening. Yep. Um, you know, NBA continues to grow. But some of those other things, even hockey and MLS, I know we're, we're talking about all this growth of soccer and everything, but that's what NBC, NBC Sports was, and they couldn't keep in business because it's about viewership and those big top funnel activities yeah. um, that have been established for a long time. Yeah, so let's, let's take one other thing on uh, 2022, um, you know, before we wrap the first segment. And that is, you know, are you looking at the the bigger trends? All right. So when you make some of these decisions, we've just hit a few. You know, one you mentioned was, um, you know, how things got a little chaotic um, or how people wanted to uh, to advertise, you know, in 2022, especially the latter part of the year. Well, guess what? Um, and we heard it early on, but not everyone heard it. You know, politics was a huge driver. All right. In 2022. So guess what? You decided you wanted to get in in August or September what was available. Yeah. And then didn't everyone see, I mean, granted in Georgia here, we had a lot more, a lot longer, um, but the rate to advertise, you know, in September, October, and then yeah. all the way through November were ridiculous. So if you weren't thinking ahead, guess what? You're going to be paying a lot more if you wanted to do something yeah, last minute. They would bump you anyway. Even yeah. if you were thinking ahead, unfortunately, yeah. the way the political system is set up, they really have the the right to the inventory sure. and the right to bump you and throw you into worse spots. It's it's so broken. Yeah. I don't want to go into it here because it'll depress me, but it is, it is yeah. so broken. One, how much money is just thrown away at the political system. When you see the money disappear, the people you're dealing with, they're not the brightest lights in the galaxy. They are spending money <laughs> in places where they don't do me. To give you a great example, uh, this station, Extra One 63 conservative news talk station. We don't brand it as anything but the number one advertiser was Stacey Abrams on our yeah. programmatic platform. I mean, no offense, but like I get what you're trying to do, but throwing money somewhere because you think that it's effective and cheap is not the way to buy because uh, it's the wrong place to be advertising. That's so a great, it's, it's a bad, bad example. Oh, no, but that's a great example of 2022 and looking back. For sure. What worked, what didn't work? For Would sure. my money have been more effective somewhere else? And I think that's going to be what a lot of the next segment's going to be about. Is, is and I'm, we're not going to tell you where to spend your money. We're going to give you the trends and tell you what's coming so you can make sure you're allocating the right way. Because the worst thing you can do is cut back on spending. Um, you know, obviously... 10% here, 15% here if you optimize. But if you're going to cut your advertising, you know, a great example, NBC Sports again. Why did they fail? Because they didn't invest in enough content in the upfront. 
right? Yeah. If they invested in content in the upfront, then they wouldn't have the problem with advertising. If they were able to bid and get some of those bigger league games, you know, even if it's a Sunday NBA game, even if it's a whatever the case may be, then they would still exist because those are booming. So same thing with your advertising. If you're not investing now, you are going to be screwed in the long run when things do catch that upward swing again. Yeah, they had one great platform, and that was the Premier League Soccer, but they didn't invest and build something around that. Yeah, and, and I think Premier League in itself is growing in popularity. Don't yeah. get me wrong. Yeah. But I do not interact with a lot of people who wake up at 6 a.m. to watch oh. a Premier League game. And if they do, usually they're watching highlights, they're watching clips. They're not waking up to watch an entire match at 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock oh, oh, in the morning. No, absolutely. And, and again, that was just that was only one platform. That was only so much co- of their content. Right. So they had to do more. No, absolutely. Uh, so, no, I think if you, you think back, at least take stock. Take stock of where uh, where you were this year, what worked, what didn't work. And if you don't know, and you're going to hear this again, if you don't know what worked, stop doing it till you figure it out. You yeah, know, I mean, sure. I think that's, you know, I, I get people who uh, who say, well, you know, I'm doing this and uh, maybe I'm doing Facebook ads. And uh, I'm like, OK, so what's your what was your performance? Right. And some yeah. businesses it may work and, and some will say, I'm not sure. Well, then guess what? Take a couple months off till whoever you're doing it with can give you the data that yeah. says, hey, this is ha- you know how much business it drove in or you know exposure, you name it. But if yeah. you don't know, stop. Yeah. I also think, I'm going to elaborate a little further, know enough to be dangerous. Again, wh- if you're dealing with an agency or a company, they're going to tell you the stuff that they want to tell you, right? And honestly, we say it all the time, who cares how many people saw the message if nobody bought the product? Who cares what the engagement rates are? Again, I'm just saying simply, if you don't know the metrics for success from the beginning and then how to look at them and verify them for yourself at the end, then Trip's right. Pull back. Because one, you have the wrong partner. You should have been walked through it. Two, you're in a space where you are most likely wasting money. And it doesn't happen every time. There are some people that in good faith just want to keep out of it. But honestly, most more times than not, when you, are, when you keep out of it, yeah, and a company wants to keep you out of it, it's for a reason. So I think he brings a good point. But yeah. again, know enough to be dangerous. And there's plenty of information out there from LinkedIn learning to there's there's classes, Google, Facebook, they offer classes. They want people to advertise on how to do this the right way and how to optimize the right way. So spend your time doing that. For yeah, sure. I'll close this segment with, you know, these are just kind of my guidelines when uh, I was running large marketing uh, organizations. So our outsource partners, and we'd have creative agencies, we'd have digital agencies, we would have PR. Those are kind of the three, sure. and, and we'd have some other specialty. But um, first off, anytime we brought on someone new, okay, I would, you know, we'd always have quarterly reviews with all of them separately. But, you know, with someone new, I would pretty much let them know that we're going to do a year-end, you know, review and wrap up doesn't mean we're not going to continue on the next year but i wanted that first year i wanted a real deep dive then once we're into it everyone still got a three-year you know it's not an rfp but it was a three-year how's our relationship and and some we kept going and some we change and it's just you can't just let things go on forever so yeah um with that you know we'll uh, we'll come back after the break and we will talk a little bit about things to look for in 2023 and you're listening to the marketing madmen on extra 106.3 don't miss the 10 for $10 produce sale this week at Safeway. Get select produce like large Haas avocados, mangoes, cucumbers, large lemons, green, red, or yellow bell peppers, or 16-ounce bags of Signature Farms baby peeled carrots for only a dollar each. Also this week at Safeway, select meats or buy one, get one free. Get items like Signature Farms 80% lean ground beef or 16-ounce containers of Jenny O 93% lean ground turkey, burger patties or Italian-style or taco-style ground turkey. Buy one, get one free. Visit Safeway.com for more great deals. Now back to the Marketing Mad Men on Extra 106.3 FM. Welcome back to the Marketing Mad Men. Trip Job and Nick Constantino here, and uh, we are kicking off 2023. And we talked a little bit about looking back on the first segment. And now let's get into the fun thing we always do is, uh, you know, do you have, you know, I guess for yourself or for businesses, New Year's resolutions? Yeah, the fun stuff, right? The things that people break within the first two weeks and the yeah. gym memberships, they lock yeah, you in for the a gym year. still, parking lots are still full. Yeah, if All I could right. figure out how to do that model with my mind, that's like the upfronts. That's the upfronts. I just can't bring myself to do it, though, because, again, you, you don't want partners that are there just to come in for two weeks and then leave because eventually when they see that bill and that credit card statement, they're going to cancel and you're always just in turnover. Uh, but I guess their model's built that way. Uh, so we ran a we ran a poll. We we 
we went out on social media on LinkedIn and we put a poll out asking about just a couple of New Year's resolutions and see what people wanted. So let's talk about that. So first off, this was a little bit flawed because LinkedIn only allows so many freaking characters. Yes. So like you're trying to fit these your ideas into these small words. So here's what we came up with. It's what was your most pressing New Year's resolution as a marketer? One, update to Google Analytics 4. I threw that in there just to see how where people were that Google Analytics 3 is ending. And if yeah. you're not on 4 by July, you're going to have no data. Uh, so thought we'd get more response there. Um, two, fo focus more on brand building. We've talked about that a lot. Yep. Demand is going to stop. Right, it's going to slow down. So you have to start generating your own demand. You're probably already too late if you're thinking about this for the first time now. Uh, but it is a good time to reshuffle back. Diversify marketing spend. Again, I threw this in there. This is literally the basis of this show. I threw yeah. it in there because I wanted to see. But honestly, at the same time, if you are going into a downturn and a recession, it probably is the scariest thing for people to do to add more to their mix. So I understand some of that there. And then the last one, work closer with my partners. Um, so without further ado, here are your results. Uh, out of 100%, 19% update to Google Analytics 4. Okay. 48% focus more on brand building, which was good. That's music to my ears yeah. sometimes. Yeah. I appreciate that. Um, 29% were closer with my partners. Would have thought for the love of God that would have been the highest one. Just because if you're really talking about downturn, you need those partners to be there for you more. And lastly, diversify my marketing spend. Only 5% of oh, people man. responded. Any, I think we any write ins? Our, we, we timed ourselves. They, they were write ins, but they were all fit in these four categories. Oh, okay. There were a couple that were, you know, don't put all your eggs in one basket. There were a couple that were optimize my digital channel, oh, stuff like that. But, but most people um, stayed in the parameters, which is good. Um, you know, I think out of all of those, again, we've talked about these at length. Um, for this state of this, update to Google Linux 4, that should not be an option. 100% of people should have done it. You should be updated because it's going to end in July. And more importantly, the new platform yeah. allows further engagement and so much more information. Uh, Google Linux 3 is still an old product. If, it's still 10 years old. If you don't update, you will lose your current data. Well, it'll just stop collecting yeah, I mean, yeah. You're, you're I mean, done. that's the point. You're, you're not going to have anything, so you have to. So You're done. Yeah. Uh, so focus more on brand building. I, I, again, this is your sales funnel, right? There's less demand for the conversion state, so it's time to reinvest in your brand. If you're a trusted brand, people are more likely to buy, buy you in downturn and economic downturns. If you're trusted, I just think that there are so many companies out there that once they start consolidating, the ones with the most trust and the best brands are the ones that are going to strive and thrive and survive. Um, so that also has to do with marketing, right? A lot of times the ones that have established the biggest brand for themselves are the ones that gobble up the smaller companies. So I think that was a good one also. Um, diversifying my marketing spend. I mean, Trip, you've talked about it now for 70 uh, episodes on this thing. So yeah, if surprised, you're not, yeah. Are you surprised that was only 5% of the audience? Um, I am, but well, not only is it only 5%, but that so few do it well. Because yeah. there's so many people that I think shift uh, quickly into different areas. And, they, and some people don't even know you know, really where they spend or they look at it from tactics. They're not looking at it from uh, other perspectives of their business. Yeah, I got to call their own growth or, or are they doing it to, to support their brand? They don't know why. They You're don't right. know why. Yeah. I got a call yesterday from my brother. He finished his paternity leave, went back to work. And again, he does, he, he was on the show. He does the social media advertising for Facebook. And he was so surprised when he got back that Facebook doesn't know how to advertise on social media. He said it is so siloed and so broken between WhatsApp and Instagram. It is so broken that they don't know wow. how to advertise when all they do as a, BD, as a medium yeah, is get marketing dollars. Right. So when he told me that, I mean, it was it was a moment of like, what the heck happened? And, and look, he was out for three months. I, I get yeah. it. But he, having that conversation when they drive home, really, if Facebook can't figure out how to do yeah. it, how the heck are most of these businesses doing it? No, wow. Yeah, I'm unbelievable. And then we're closer with my partners. 30%. Look, if one in every three people is saying it, that's great. But, man, it, it, I should have let people take make two choices because they should have picked all these. But we're closer right. with my partners. Again, I'm going to say it. If you are going into a time of economic or any kind of uncertainty, the relationship you have with every one of these people is important. And I think Tripp and I talked at the break. He's going to go into – what one, one of his, but honestly, when I say meet with people, I'm not talking about a phone call once a month. I'm saying put strict metrics of accountability in place, review them often, and make sure they know that somebody is looking over their shoulder because it's not that they're, ang um, uh, they're enemies, they're against you, uh, but complacency is the easiest thing to let set in. And most of these times, these agencies don't have... 45-year-olds with money invested in the company running your accounts. They have 21-year-olds fresh out of college running your accounts. And yeah, my, uh, my daughter is a, uh, you know, assistant account executive. 
at a, uh, an agency. So, yes. Um, and there's, she's nothing wrong, no, there's nothing but, wrong with it. And eventually right. they get to middle manager. I'm yeah. just saying that if you think a 21-year-old is going to be as invested in your brand as you are, one of your employees are, uh, you're mistaken. Yeah, well, and the other thing I would add, because um, you're spot on, and we talked about it before the break of understanding where your, your spend was and uh, talking and having those reviews where you're, with your partners. We would also get our key partners, and we would kick off the year, and I would let them know what our business goals are. Now, there may be some things I can't say of, sure. okay, you know, look, we're expecting EBITDA to make X million or whatever it was. Right. Um, but I would say, okay, we're looking, you know, to increase our margin by, um, you know, 100 basis points this year because – you know, the focus is on our premium products, yeah. you know, and, and things of that nature. And that's a different kind of advertising than just trying to generate demand. Absolutely. We wanted them to understand, you know, those business goals, the marketing driven goals in there, not just what we were looking at from a digital, because what we were looking at from a digital advertising platform or a creative brand platform should be in sync with those business related goals. Yeah. And we wanted them to, to hear that. Guess what? If they don't, yeah. Oh, we no. We had to know ours. No, ours were there. You have to know yours and how to translate them also. Because how does that relate to marketing? Like you just said, right? Ultimately, you're trying to increase margins. That means you have to increase the value perception of the good in which you're selling, which marketing can do in the right places, right? Marketing on TikTok to increase your value is insane. I mean, you're reaching the wrong people. Those people yeah. are not buying based on a value proposition. So there is a way to do it. And again, that's what the – and again, I think you're right. If you say, hey, here are our goals. Take two weeks and get back to me, to me. on how you're going to achieve these things. I'm not saying change anything. I'm yeah. saying approach this with some sort of reason and logic and show me how this year might be different than last year. Even within um, the same things because you can change copy. You can change targeting, who you reach, what time you reach them. You can change you can metrics change timing without changing of it. budgets. You can change, exactly. There's so many different ways to do it. So that's there's my, so mine, and obviously I'm in a new role um, back in an old industry, but uh, kind of approaching it from a different side. So the good news is I know you know, a little bit of the industry. I know some people and players in it. Um, my big thing is you know, I just see right now it is critically important – to you know, reestablish those relationships in person, face to face, you know, with people. Don't yep. get me wrong. You know, uh, I'm not going to hop on an airplane every week. I don't feel like doing that anymore. Um, but I think it has already been so valuable to reconnect and see people, whether they're current customers or they're prospective customers. You know, people that I know, and then starting to to meet new people, new prospects. Um, And setting up that time, and I think people are very open as long as you're respectful of their time, Um, but it is such a different, you know, because we're essentially a service to the industry Um, and, you know, versus just trying to do it virtually, trying to do it via email, et cetera. But the phone calls and the in-person meetings, um, that's my big resolution. It's got it's got to start there. You know, and it's got to build. And I think there's, you know, if you're a business out there, think about your current customers. You know, whether you believe it's going to be a challenging year or not, uh, anytime it is, I'm a huge believer of you got to protect your current customers. So are you seeing them? Are you talking to them? And then, you know, then there's always the customer acquisition. Yeah. So. We can oh, relate that. Mine. I think you can relate that back to marketing right now. One of the things I'm seeing, right, the trust has eroded in Google and Facebook and Twitter and all this stuff. So if you look, apparently, I, I in reading these things, advertising has been down trending backwards for six quarters in a row now, and it will continue yeah. into 23. Well, you know, there's lots of things at play here, but one of the reasons I really think is there's no sales staffs. There's no people out there to interact. When Facebook goes bad, there's some dude that's going to reach out to you from a third-party vendor who might have a clue. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we joke that that when that, when I got my call from Facebook and they were trying to promote this station when Rush was on, and you know, it, you know, yeah, Rush had passed, but they were still airing the Rush Limbaugh show, and the girl goes, "Oh, who's that?" And I was like. Who, who's Rush Limbaugh? And I was like, wait a second. So you're, you're sitting here with me and you don't know my product, but you don't know the single 
most historical radio figure ever? Like, what what are you right. doing? So I think that that's going to really erode further. And I think they're going to figure it out. I do think that Google and Facebook and all these guys, that's why they're local, they're putting satellite offices in. And I think they're going to put more money and time into sales staffs and on-the-ground people and local-based charities than they did into some of this research and development into kind of future goals. I think that is going to be a big change. And I think we'll save it. But right now, I think one of the reasons that you're seeing – the advertising industry go backwards is to, they were so lucky for such so much demand for so long that now that they have to create their own demand, people are losing a step and they don't exactly know what to do. Yeah, well, and, and let's just hit on that. So one of the the articles we saw out here was four things we'll see in 2023. And I think um, you, you kind of hit on it. The first point was the ad recession will last longer than most hope. All right. You, you mentioned the fact that, you know, six quarters um, and a number of ad tech companies will be hurt. I mean, yeah. we've kind of gone through that. And I think that you know, we're going to get into what does that mean for you in a minute with some of these other predictions. But I totally agree that, you know, it's um, things are being, you know, kind of sifted out. Yeah. And the ones that just aren't getting it or not, you know, creating differentiating value are, are losing out. Um, <laughs> I know you love this one. Programmatic ad tech soup won't be much clearer. Yeah. I'll let you, you go. You, you could sum this up. There is a great graphic out there that shows how many different parties are involved in placing a programmatic ad. And one, like technology is a marvel. And how, how this can be done in a millisecond and go to so many places, like the ad clearinghouse, then there's the demand side, then there's the supply side, and then there's the data gatherers who are mining it out to direct here. It's amazing. But at the same time, everybody's got their hands out for a cut. Everybody is taking a piece of this of this pie. So that's why the prices are rising so quickly. And again, as we were spending wildly in an economic boom, no one cared. But now that people are paying attention, it's like, wait a second. Whoa, how much are you taking? How does this key price keep going up? I'm just going to do my own. And the companies that can afford to do that, half will probably succeed because they'll do it the right way. Half probably won't succeed. But again, I... If you look at programmatic buying right now, there are places in which our, the price is going higher for a podcast ad than it is for three radio commercials. One has been built around for 100 years, has built infrastructure. One has built trust. One actually creates, distributes, and sells their own product, and one is a jumbled soup of 100 people's things bouncing in each direction. How so, is that worth more? And that's the question. I, so I will throw an analogy here, and I, I believe it with programmatic, and this is where I've always been. And, yes, I probably lost out on some of the uptick, um, but I will compare it to cryptocurrency. Okay. And my view is if you don't truly understand something and there is some type of a speculative – this is more investing, but investing marketing dollars in programmatic applies the same – uh, if I'm going to invest, whether it's my business dollars, whether it's my personal dollars, uh, I don't invest in speculation. I want, I'm want i kind of the Warren Buffett. I sure. want to understand what I'm investing in. And if I can't understand it, then I'm either going to look. If it looks like it's big, I'm going to research it more until sure. I understand it well enough, or I'm not going to do it. And to me, and, and look, I, I'm not as deep in it as you are on programmatic, but I see most businesses out there don't understand programmatic yet get sold on it and then have the issues yeah. you, you see. So that's my comparison is if someone tells you it's the greatest thing in the world and you don't understand it, how would you feel with crypto right now? For sure. Okay. I, and, I, and I agree with you. And look, the, the one thing, let's establish programmatic, right? Programmatic exists in the sense we're talking about it because everyone is watching TV online now. Yeah. And if you really have turned on your TV to put on a cable news channel or a cable, or uh, sorry, cable news is fine, but like TBS or TNT, mm -hmm. I, I have not turned on other than to watch an NBA game, TBS or TNT or CNN or USA, any of these channels in probably two years. Yeah. So I am being fed ads via Hulu and, and all these other structures, right? So that is what we're talking about. My personal opinion is you have to understand the nature of how it's conducting. You do for sure. But if you have a good business model and good copy and good goals in which you're trying to obtain, there is a place for programmatic buying. If yeah. you have good, if you're, if, because all your goal is you can A B test three commercials, see which drive directly to, see which one generate the highest returns. So that is so, that is so 
simplistic in its sense, but realistically, no one's got their Google Analytics attuned the right way. Yeah. No one's got the metrics. No one's got the goals set up to watch these things happen. So if you are a smart business owner and you really have a product that can be purchased online or trace sales directly to it, programmatic is absolutely the way to go. It absolutely is. Yeah. Same with Facebook advertising. If you have a, a T-shirt that you're trying to sell and you have a hot chick in a t-shirt on Facebook and you're saying it drove this many sales that, directly because that's here, your audience because your that's audience, audience is there because it's your audience then I am saying you do those mediums all the time but I'm saying if you're trying to build a brand long term I've still not been shown yeah. that the internet has the ability to build long term brands in fact when Amazon Yelp Google, all of these companies were startups. They said never traditional media. The second the investor money came in, they became the single largest advertisers. You see Google billboards oh, everywhere. Yeah. Amazon is the number one radio spender. You wonder why they spend in those mediums. Well, what, what ad did you hear or see most on TV during the holidays? It was the Amazon ad, the, the uh, globe, the, the snow globe. globe. And I thought it was a fantastic ad. Now, about the first the, two times I saw it, was yeah, the, about the hundred and twelfth time I it saw it, I was. I mean, I I actually knew it. It was one of those I can name that tune in two notes. Yeah, I mean, truly, I you know turned yeah. away. Uh, the last one I think it ties in is um, Netflix will finish the year as a video ad market leader, and I think that really is what you're you're talking about. Okay, with the likelihood of it's going to be a little bit of turbulence, a little bit of downhill to start. I sure. do think things are going to pick back up. Um, and we've already talked about, you know, whether it's NBC Sports and other uh, these um, platforms going away. I think as long as your audience is there, okay, I do think if you're going to invest, you want to be with some of the leaders. All right. Now, don't don't jump on Netflix if, you know, it just doesn't hit your target audience at all. Let, let's just say you're, you know, uh, some type of senior living or something like, you know, very senior um, type uh, product, hearing aids, or wh whatever it happens sure. to be, right? I, you know, there still might be spots on Netflix, but there may be other places that are hitting your target audience a little bit better. Um, but I do think that this is the type of year. I, I'm not going to experiment with the new fly by night, all the new startups. I think you know uh, what this is saying is okay. Be, invest where the is value. Yeah. Well, two things on Netflix. One, uh, I always find it fascinating when these companies, and it's happened time after time, say we are a subscription-based model. We will never take advertising dollars. Uh, and then all of a sudden, every one of them take advertising dollars. And that math is simple, right? In your head, what is easier to tolerate? $10 coming out of your pocket or two or three commercials every time you're watching something. In your head, what is an easier value proposition? And yeah. as things are booming and everyone's well and 401ks are up and stocks are up, I think people's value perception is, I don't want commercials. But as that goes away and you start looking at, look how many subscriptions you have on your bill, there's gotta be a way to fix it. So that's the first thing. Number two, Netflix has, what, 15 years now of pure data on who their audience is. So when you talk about the scope of what they right. have, they kept that close to the vest. A lot of yeah. these other companies gave that access to other people and diluted it a little bit. Netflix has du direct first party access to know behavior, everything that their people do. So now you'll ask the question, why haven't they been able to succeed as much if they have that data? Well, having the data on someone is easy. Making content to appeal to them is not. That is right. why the rise and fall of every great from NBC to CBS to all these companies. I mean, TBS and TNT used to be the top of the pinnacle. They're not even making content anymore. They're over with it. Right. So it, it, it is easier to visualize who your audience is than it is to make the content for them. Especially yeah, the are you a side. distribution arm? Are you an advertising arm? Or are you a content arm? And it used to be they were all three. Yeah. And not not very well, much anymore. Well, and and they still are, right? I mean, yeah. Time Warner and and HBO, and then the, you have right. Comcast and NBC. So these, but but again, the problem yeah. there is is your inex old intellectual property, right? Yeah. Some of these movies that have been tied up. I mean, MGM, how many times has it switched hands as a film production house or Fox? So some of these yeah. IPs are tied up backwards. I mean, HBO Max is actually cutting their own content that they own, selling it to back to other people, so they can make more money to funnel the future. Those right. are things that would have been unheard of just six months ago. So right. again, look, the point is the nature of ads advertising is going to change very quickly over the next six months. Be out ahead of it. Don't invest in places that you don't understand. And if you need yep. a crash course, honestly, there's so much material out there. Yep. I'm lucky. I learned programmatic because we, we ran, just for context, 
I have run 120 million programmatic ads this year through this building that have come through my computer that I have set up in a, that is why I know it. It's yeah. not because I've read about it. I've had that set, but I'm just, what I'm saying is, is that set up a small sample size, pull a grand out, run an experiment on yeah. a grand just to see if it works, and, see how and, economies of scale are set up. And track it. That's the key. So um, we got a couple more minutes in this segment. I'm going to hit the uh, top 2023 predictions for B2B marketing. And this came uh, from uh, the CMO, Camilla Thompson from Caliber Mind. And, um, you know, a couple of things that, um, you know, she said is that uh, there's a paradigm shift for go to market teams. And so, you know, in B2C, obviously marketing we've already talked about is, is understood, but that, you know, in, in many, um, B2B companies, you know, they're not thinking about the uh, the go-to-market side of things. Maybe they're just thinking about, um, you know, it's, it's, it's sales support and things of that nature. So um, B2B is becoming much more focused on understanding the customers, understanding how do you get to market. And you really need to put that and, and think, of, think in the same terms B2C does if you're a B2B marketer. Um, I think that's one, and I think this uh, the second one is um, data driven CMOs. You know, will succeed and will win. And I know you're a big believer in data, and I think that's um, again B two B has probably been behind B two C over the last uh, couple of decades. This is one I've thought a lot about. I think one of your problems here is not it has nothing to do with what the CMOs know. It's the age of the CMOs. Uh, mm-hmm. CMO, to get anyone into the executive suite of a C-suite of a business, usually requires tenure. You're talking 50s, mid-50s, right? You would let, Let's make that estimate. Most CMOs in this country are 50, yeah. mid-50, right? So no one that's 55 years old grew up in the data revolution, so they don't know what the heck they're talking about. They may have yeah. learned it. Don't get me wrong. But I think as the, the data set ages and people age into the space, and look, maybe they're going to get younger. Maybe they're 45, whatever the case may be. We took, sti- I think that's gonna- we took statistics coming through business school. We did not take – you know, digital marketing. I took the first, actually, sorry, that's a lie. I went to major in decision information systems, which was ahead for its time at the University of Maryland in 2000. Yeah. I took one math class and I changed my math, my major one day later. Yeah. So it existed then, but right. even then, the amount of math, none of that math is applicable right now. Right. So the fact that they were using so much meant they didn't have a good grasp on how the systems and how this was going to all work yeah. or something like the trade desk was going to come and facilitate this all. Yeah, Calc um, 2 got me out of being a math major. So I made it through two classes. But um, the last two real quick. Uh, oh, I meant one up. day, not two yeah. classes. I yeah, made it one, one day. day. Wow, I, <laughs> I made it a little farther. But uh, the most in-demand people won't tolerate bad work environments. I think that speaks for itself. And then B2B will realize why B2C uses customer data platforms, which, you know, maybe we'll kick off the last segment a little more on that. I mean, we're, we're, we're kind of already talking about it. But I think, um, you know, understand what a, maybe a customer data platform is if you're a B2B owner. So, um, you know, I think these are all uh, great things to be thinking about, looking at, uh, you know, some of them are basics, but sometimes sure. we have to get back to the basics sure. at the beginning some of the year. Some of them are complicated as can be. I got, compli- I got spun up just talking about them. Yeah, I know. So, well, all right. With that, um, you've been listening to the Marketing Mad Men on Extra 106.3, and we'll be right back. Don't miss the 10 for $10 produce sale this week at Safeway. Get select produce like large Haas avocados, mangoes, cucumbers, large lemons, green, red, or yellow bell peppers, or 16-ounce bags of Signature Farms baby peeled carrots for only a dollar each. Also this week at Safeway, select meats or buy one, get one free. Get items like Signature Farms 80% lean ground beef or 16-ounce containers of Jenny O 93% lean ground turkey, burger patties or Italian-style or taco-style ground turkey. Buy one, get one free. Visit Safeway.com for more great deals. Now back to the Marketing Mad Men on Extra 106.3 FM. Welcome back to the Marketing Mad Men. Trip Job and Nick Constantino here. And, um, you know, we just wrapped up kind of some predictions for 2022 in the B2B space. And the last one, I just want to maybe give a, a quick nod before we get into our own personal predictions, um, is that, you know, B2B will start to realize that, um, you know, are they using a customer data platform and the, the power of using customer data platforms? And, you know, what is that? Yeah. As we were talking in the break, I mean, it's essentially, do you have a CRM type platform? Do you mine that information? Do you understand the you, type of customer? Do your people on the streets understand that? Because yeah. that's the people who have to enter that data. And any data is flawed if it's entered incorrectly or not used all the time. Right. I think that's as important. Yeah. So, you know, what can you segment your customers? Okay. So unlike, uh, 
you know, maybe at the B2C level where you might segment them down to a lot of different things. Just think about all the different emails you got during the holidays and holiday sales based on what you looked at online. But can you segment them into certain areas that then you can have actionable marketing campaigns, work with either your in-house teams or your external agencies to drive um, marketing decisions yeah. based on those segments. Predictive that's that's it's really predictive, all it predictive, is. Predictive behavior. I'll give you a great example. So we have this CRM system that has all these different categories of advertising. And all I've dreamed about is being able to th- push three buttons and visualize which categories have gone up and down over the past couple of years, where there's opportunity, where trends are going. Yeah. Okay. Don't work that way. I have to go in, manually plot data, align different categories that should be here, that should be there, because it's been 15, 20 years yeah. of people on a whim entering information. So could I do it? Yes. Is it worth the time? Probably yeah. not to do it. So if you have a system that is built for that and you can now start visualizing, my goodness, it makes life easier. And that goes back to a previous thing we've talked about, which is the predi- predictive AI yeah. analytics. I think if you've gotten your business where you're in a position where you can do that, you will find a much easier time to both grow your customer base and then get more money out of your current, current customer base. Yep. Yeah. All right. So Nick Constantino, Put on your Karnak hat. What uh, What are your pr- uh, predictions or forecasts for 2023? So uh, I think a lot of this is going to be sensitive to the market, so I'm going to make predictions there too. Like most, I think we, we have a pretty rough start of the year, and then we land on our feet. I don't think it's going to be as early as people think, but I think we land on our feet this year. I think there's too much good economic mm-hmm. data out there. Um, I think China opening up is going to be bad for a couple of months, but then it'll balance itself out. So we'll start with some simple ones. I think one of the big radio groups will go bankrupt this year. Um, so between Intercom, Cumulus, iHeart, um, Radio One, one of them will go bankrupt. Um, you know, I'm not going to go into which one. I'm not going to it, but it, it will not be good for an industry. But eventually, once we force all these big consolidators and corporations out of radio, it will go back to the strengths, which was connecting with the local community. So that's one. I'm not saying I look forward to it, but I think it's going to happen. Trust will continue to erode in Facebook, Google. I think you're two or three years away for them figuring out how to get it back. I think Google has botched the demise of cookies and is delayed and delayed and delayed and has lost trust. And I think Facebook, I think the more I look at Zuckerberg, the more people that predicted he was a robot 10 years ago might have been right. Um, And I think Musk, I'm a little scared for what's going to happen with Twitter because some of the people I speak to that are far down conspiracy rabbit holes believe he's the new savior because he's the only one that says how it is. So if he foresaw that happening, Twitter is going to be a force for some really weird stuff over the next couple of years. Um, And then the last thing I'm going to say is that ad budgets will continue to go backwards but then quickly start to trend upwards again. So I think you'll see the tail end of 23 that those budgets will follow the stock market because people will realize by stopping to advertise now, June, they'll start seeing their money go backwards. And then by September, they'll be like, uh-oh, I, should have been, I never should have stopped advertising. Yeah, well, I, I agree with you. I think, I think September, Labor Day will be kind of the um, consumerism f- feeling uh, more upbeat about the economy. I think it will, you know, we talked about austerity before and things of that nature. I think the first part of the year will continue that way, but I do think uh, the last four months of the year we'll see uh, we'll see that upbeat. Um, I would like to see, this is not really a forecast, but um, I was never a huge fan of zero-based budgeting because there's a lot of work when you do that. Sure. And that's essentially every year saying, hey, um, start with zero and add things. Don't Don't keep what you had in the past. Right. Um, You have to uh, basically justify everything you want to do. Um, But I would say I would like to see more because the way the year is going to start um, really challenge why you're doing something. Just because you've done it for the past eight years doesn't mean you need to keep doing it. Yeah. And I, 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 and I wish more people would do that. This is the year to me to do it. Because I do think you're going to want to sp- keep spending during the yeah. the soft times, maybe not at the same level, but have that bank account ready come August to have money to be able to spend and be out there ahead of other people. My only problem with the zero-based spending is I look at it like football, right? Yeah. Some of these quarterbacks that are out there playing – uh, they don't suck. They've they've had six offensive coordinators because by the time that they the next guy gets fired, they're starting from scratch every year. So yeah. my only thing is now that being said, the way you said it, hey, this is a forced situation to make you do it because then that makes sense. Like there's a moment you're like, I gotta fire the coach. Hey, well we did this. I mean this this goes way back, all right? Because we're talking about newspaper advertising, but um, you know we did the year before I came in, they completely stopped all magazine ads, so Southern Living yep. and, and all of that. Bad decision. All right, but they did it because they had a budget problem. Okay, so the next year we put 
you know, magazines back, but we looked at what the historical view was. Sure. We looked at our, obviously, our digital side. We did TV. We did the HGTV Dream Home. Um, newspaper. Okay, newspaper was trending down. Uh, but we didn't, we weren't ready to kill it because there was still target markets sure. or people led. But they typically would do an eight-week run, okay, an eight-week uh, weekend type sure. run. Um, what we decided was five, um, you know, the frequency of five weeks was as far as we could go. If we got to four, definitely three, there wasn't enough, right. um, you know, you didn't remember it, you didn't sure. act on it. You so need to reach out once, I got, once I got to five, uh, it's five, then zero. I do not go four, three, two, one. So what we did in just about every market, unless we had great results, is we cut from eight to five immediately. So that's an idea of yeah, zero-based sure. budgeting in that we decided we still wanted to you, do you some level. Like you were starting from zero, but they didn't remove it completely. We didn't do it exactly. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of the way. And so guess what? There were, therefore, we had more money because we basically took, you know— Thirty-seven percent out of our of our newspaper budget. And now you're starting with zero from that money because you have exactly. now this brand new budget that you got to start in reality. Exactly. Yeah. So that, that's kind of the view. Yeah. Uh, my other uh, predictions for this year, um, you know, I I think it's going to be a little bit, uh, unfortunately, of the Wild West. You know. Yeah. Still. You yeah. Know, your point like with social media. Um, I just think that there's there's still so much out there noise. Yeah. And I think um, I think clarity of content will stand out. And I think people that really focus on, you know, that clarity of thought leadership and doing things and less is more. OK. And I think, you know, quick, short, you know, take the same topic, run it three or four times over, you know, four segments of it. I think clarity of content will really drive home messaging. And um, I, th I think that's to me one of the ways to go this year, because. It, it, there, there's just going to be so many people trying to throw spaghetti at the wall and see what sticks. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think those are some good predictions. I think, um, you know, I think as we do this, I think we'll get a little bit better at putting real numbers on them and things that we can be right or wrong on. And I think yeah. we'll look back and, and look at this and see where we were. Um, that being said, and you know, we spend all this whole time looking forward. I want to look back quickly and congratulate Dickey Broadcasting Company. Yeah. This is the 30th anniversary of this company, and there are not many awesome. media companies left in this country, uh, let alone in this space. Um, so we are part of that family. Extra 1063 is, uh, the podcast park is. So I do want to congratulate David Dickey and, and, and Dickey Broadcasting, 6A Fan, and everybody uh, for 30 years and I hope them 30 more. Yeah, uh, fantastic. That's great news. And oh, another prediction. That we'll make uh, our two-year anniversary come April. So uh, with there the marketing madmen, right? So that's uh, that's I you know I don't want to say anything's in the bank, but I feel pretty good about that one. So, that's pretty good, man. Um, all right. Well, you've uh, been great, great uh, talking with you today, Nick, and uh, you've been listening to the marketing madmen on Extra One Hundred Six Point Three. We'll see you next week. Don't miss the 10 for $10 produce sale this week at Safeway. Get select produce like large Haas avocados, mangoes, cucumbers, large lemons, green, red, or yellow bell peppers, or 16-ounce bags of Signature Farms baby peeled carrots for only a dollar each. Also this week at Safeway, select meats or buy one, get one free. Get items like Signature Farms 80% lean ground beef or 16-ounce containers of Jenny O 93% lean ground turkey, burger patties or Italian-style or taco-style ground turkey. Buy one, get one free. Visit Safeway.com for more great deals. This morning in the Atlanta airport, no one's missing a meal on Mac Wilburn's watch. With 11 restaurants to serve passengers, he's got dining for every destination. And it all started when Mac talked with First Horizon Bank about opening a franchise in the airport. Now it's open for business and cleared for takeoff. First Horizon Bank, let's find a way. Go to firsthorizon.com slash Mac. First Horizon Bank, member FDIC.